Hey guys, it's Amy here. Today I bring you my December wrap up for 2016, the final wrap up for the year. Let's get to it. So let's just jump into the books that I read in December. I had a really good reading month. I actually had three five star books, so I can't wait to talk to you about those. Let's get into it. So as always, we'll go from my lowest star rating to my highest star rating. First, for the three stars, we have The Versions of Us by Laura Barnett. I actually read this as a kind of in real life book buddy read with my best friends so we've started reading some books together and this is the book that we chose for December. It's basically a love story between two characters named Eva and Jim and the book takes three different versions of their lives so a version where they are together from the very beginning where they meet and they stay together a version where they get together and then they fall apart and what happens after that and then another version where something else happens and and all the way through you each chapter is a different version and you see different like life events unfold in those different versions of their lives but you may remember me talking about life after life by Kate Atkinson which is a similar kind of thing where you have like various timelines and various stories all happening in the same book and I struggled with that book because I just have really poor memory and this book kind of had the same thing with me. I was really struggling to keep up with who was married to who and who had what children with which person in each of these different versions so I had to keep kind of flip flicking back and seeing what was going on in this particular version of the story. Overall I thought it was a fun and enjoyable read and me and my friends definitely liked it as our first book for our little book club. Next we are reading To Kill a Mockingbird which I am so excited for because I have read it before and it's one of my all-time favourite books. I can't wait to see what my friends think of it but yes three stars to this one next for three stars is the christmas mystery by justine garda this one is the one that was kind of like an advent calendar so you read like one chapter per day up until christmas day i really enjoyed that element of it i liked having just a small chunk of a book to read each day up until christmas the overall message of the story is very like christian it's a very kind of it's like a nativity story kind of thing so the main character in this is a young girl who is traveling from her home across across the world basically to Bethlehem but not only is she traveling physically she's also going through time so she's going back through time when eventually she'll hit Bethlehem when Jesus is born and that's the story basically. It was a fun read maybe not really my cup of tea because it kind of reminded me of The Alchemist by Paolo Kaolo or whatever that guy's name is which I just found the kind of religious message like too much but this, I mean, I did enjoy it and I don't find the religious kind of element of it to be overbearing. I just think I would have really loved this if I had read it when I was a child or in my teenage years when I did actually attend church back then. I don't anymore and I, I kind of have different views on it all now. So this kind of... I think it just came to me at the wrong time of life. I did enjoy it though and I think I will be passing on to someone else who I know will really enjoy it. So yes, three stars to that one. Next two books I'd say are more 3.5 stars rather than three. I just couldn't choose between three and four but it's probably a solid 3.5. The first one is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This one follows the story of a young girl who is sacrificed by her village to a dark wizard who protects the village from this wood that is encroaching and kind of taking over the world that they live in. And, and all the dark things that live in the wood the wizard protects them from. So every 10 years he comes to the village and takes a girl and then after 10 years the girl is set free and she's allowed to come back. So our main character, this young girl, is given and you follow her as she is taken away by this wizard and has to go and live with him. I got a lot of um, Beauty and the Beast vibes from that element of the story. She was kind of like locked up in a tower for a little bit and didn't really know what she was doing and the wizard was like a bit of a dick to her and, and it was a bit strange. And, and that like this book just basically was like an amalgamation of so many different fairy tales it was like it didn't really know where it was meant to be or what it was trying to do so yeah I'm really struggling to say like what I didn't like or what I did like about this book it was just a really bizarre one so that's why I struggled to rate it so yeah 3.5 stars I mean I'd recommend if you like fantasy kind of things I just I don't know it was an odd one a very odd one there you go and my other 3.5 star read was The Sunlight Pilgrims by Jenny Fagan I read this as a buddy read with Sophie at Portal on the Pages link down below to her this one is set in the year 2020 and it follows a young man as he moves to Scotland after his kind of family have passed away uh, the kind of wider story of this is that the ice age is basically coming and everything is getting extremely cold and a lot of people are dying this guy moves to Edinburgh and he moves into this kind of trailer park next door to 
to him is a woman and her daughter Stella and you soon find out that Stella was once not Stella and she has been transitioning into Stella and was once a boy. I much preferred Stella's element of the story rather than the guy who has moved up to live near them. He has a kind of very strange relationship that he builds with Stella's mum but I much preferred Stella's part of the story like I thought she was a really interesting character to read through and she just she was so kick-ass like she was just so witty and funny like her conversations between everyone in the book I just I wanted her I wanted more of her basically I like the fact that there was this like ice age coming and you know these people might not survive the winter and they're all very concerned about that but the actual plot and the characters and the things that was happening between them was more important than that. I, I liked the kind of relationships and the characters a lot more than the fact that the Ice Age was coming. So yes, I did enjoy this one and I would recommend to anyone who's looking for a like apocalyptic type novel that is like less about the apocalypse, more about the people and, and just the kind of daily life of these people. Moving on to my four star reads and firstly we have The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. I read this as well as a buddy read and really really enjoyed it. So as the title suggests this basically follows the life of Santa Claus, how he came to be, where he was discovered by the little fairies that found him, how he was kind of adopted by these fairy immortal creatures and reared and then how he went on to become Santa Claus that we know today. It was just really sweet, a really quaint, lovely heartwarming read that I know I will definitely be reading again in the future. And in my edition they had these really beautiful little illustrations which I believe were actually done by Baum himself. So yes, definitely one if you're looking for a book to read next it's Christmas maybe pick this one up. While we're talking about Christmas, the other Christmas book that I read this year was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This one is illustrated by PJ Lynch. If you've been with this channel for the last year you'll know that one of my resolutions last year was to read Charles Dickens because I'd never read anything from him before so I have now done that. One thing I didn't like though about Charles Dickens and the writing style which I have a feeling is gonna be like similar in all of his other books is the way he like lists things all the time. I just get really frustrated in books when authors like list things like when it seems a little bit unnecessary and this happened a lot in this book and have a feeling that that might be the case in a lot of Charles Dickens book. Do let me know down below if I'm completely wrong but I have a feeling that I've heard people say this before and I'm not the biggest fan of it so I'm a bit hesitant now to pick up any other Charles Dickens but do let me know if I'm wrong. Tell me in the comments kind of what you think on that. I still really enjoyed it though and that was just a little thing that niggled me. I did really really love the illustrations inside this one. I thought they were beautiful and I think it's definitely one that I will pick up again in the future to read to other people or to read to, I don't know, if I ever decide to have children maybe I'll read it to them. Next we have a non-fiction book and that is Lucky by Alice Siebold. This one rip my heart out, stamped on it and just it made me feel so many things. It made me feel so angry and scared and it was just Oh, it was a really, really good book, guys. This is Alice Ebold telling the story of how she was taken in a park and beaten and raped by a man when she was in university. I personally am a very sensitive person, so I like to be warned of these kind of things, and I would say now that if you like can't deal with very very graphic descriptions of rape or violence of any kind then maybe this isn't the book for you. The first chapter of this book I I actually physically had to put the book down at a couple of stages because it was just way too much and like it it made me feel physically sick. But regardless of that if you think that you can tackle something like this in yourself I honestly think this is a book that everybody should pick up. It was just phenomenal like I Ah, like Alice Siebold is such a strong person to be able to write something like this and to get it out in the world. It's such an important message. Just her strength throughout this whole book was just, it blew me away, like how she dealt with the fact that she was raped and, and, and the whole case together was just, it was amazing. So as I said, the first chapter of this book is Alice describing in very acute detail how she was taken like what happened when she was raped and the kind of aftermath of that, how she went to the hospital, the police interviews and all of those kind of things. Like she really goes into so much depth, it's incredible. She also then goes over how her family react, how her friends react, how she brings herself back to being herself, which in a way is impossible. She is never going to be the same person and it just, it, it was fantastic. Like I'm struggling to convey 
how much this book made me feel. This is the first book that I have ever read which involves a kind of true life account of someone being raped and it was a real, like, it hit my heart and I don't really know how to express it more than that. I would highly recommend this one. But yes, like I said, I definitely put a trigger warning on this one if you are sensitive to any of those kind of things. My final four star book for the month is a graphic novel and that was A Deadly Class, volume three, I think? That's, yeah, volume three. I am chucking my way through these books. I'm really enjoying them. You'll see in my next book haul, I've got the next one ready to go. I'm really excited for it. So far, this whole series has been a four star series for me and it's actually the only kind of series like this that I've continued on with. Like, I do have Saga, but I haven't actually continued on with that. I think I've maybe got to volume three, but I haven't read volume three yet. This one, however, I'm really, really loving. Like, I, I just think it's great. Like, and obviously I can't really, like, share with you too much what it's about, but I've said before, it's basically a group of people. You follow one young boy. He goes to the school where they're training to be assassins, and there's lots of kind of betrayal and, and treachery and, and stuff within in the school and the teachers and his friends and people end up getting murdered and it and it just doesn't go his way there's lots of kind of drugs and sex and those those kind of things and it's just fun I, I really really enjoy it so yeah if you haven't checked this one out I would recommend that you do so okay guys now we're moving on to my five star reads and I'm seriously so excited for all of these I had like I can't believe I had three five star reads in a month that is a lot for me so let's talk about them first one is Madness by Roald Dahl this is a short story collection and I love this. It was so good. I read Lust, which is another one of these short story collections from Roald Dahl a couple of months ago. I gave that one four stars. I thought it was okay. Some of the stories like were a bit like so-so for me, but this was just fantastic. I loved it. I loved the kind of whole overarching like idea of madness and how in each one you're kind of guessing what could be the kind of mad element of it if you get what I mean like you're trying to guess like where this story is going to go because you obviously know something mad is going to happen at some point. For an example one of the stories in this one that I think is the first story actually this woman she finds a cat and she believes that this cat is a reincarnation of a piano player like she believes that like this piano guy is like living inside the cat and she is like adamant and she wants to go and tell like all of her friends that like this cat is a like dead, very very long dead piano player and her husband is like not liking this idea and he's really hating that she is like uh, going crazy like he thinks that she's like going completely mad but then he takes steps in a very kind of dark direction to prevent her from sharing this information with her friends and it's just brilliant like I thought it was so funny dark and witty it was just brilliant I highly would recommend this to all. <laughs> My second five star read was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier this was fantastic guys. I read this while I was unwell. I mean I've been unwell a lot but this was like the first time I was unwell and it was just the perfect thing that I needed to help me recover basically. So this is a classic and it's a classic that I think most people would enjoy. Like I don't know who could read this and not enjoy it. Um, so this one follows the story of a young woman who is unnamed. She becomes Mrs. De Winter. She marries this man and he moves her to his kind of country estate named Mandalay. When she gets there she learns of Mr. De Winter's previous wife named Rebecca title of the book. So basically our protagonist is living in the shadow of Rebecca who died in a boating accident. All of the people, all of the servants, the friends, everyone at Mandalay seems to have a very big obsession with Rebecca and how amazing she was and how how great she was and she was basically the cherry on the top of everybody's cake. So our protagonist Mrs De Winter is trying to make her way in this Mandalay estate and she is trying to win over some of the servants. Mrs Danvers, one of the servants, is an absolute cow. Mrs. Danvers cannot stand the idea that Mr. De Winter has gone off and married someone new. I can't really give away any more than that. This book is brilliant. It takes some really dark, twisty turns and things are revealed and it's just fantastic. The characters are brilliant. They're so snarky and nasty and they're just fantastic. The whole thing was so gripping. I just loved the whole story. I would highly, highly recommend this to everybody. And finally, my last five star read and the last book I actually read in the whole of the year. It's a non-fiction book. It was fantastic guys. I, I just can't stop thinking about it and I'm so glad I picked it up. 
it is In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is a non-fiction book but it reads very much like fiction and it was so easily digestible and so gripping it just it blew me away. It's basically Truman Capote did a lot of research and did a lot of investigation and interviews surrounding a mass murder that occurred in 1959 in America. The murders were of the Clutter family living in Kansas. It was the husband, wife and two of their children. So Truman Capote he actually managed to get like loads of police reports so he actually like knows what these murderers were thinking and saying and doing and, and all of these things it's so in depth you know when you hear about people being murdered and you think god i wish I knew what that person was thinking, like how could they murder someone, how could they do that, what led them to that point where they actually took another person's life. This does that, like you can actually see that side of the story, you get to find out like why they were doing that, like, like what led these murderers to be the people that they were, like their life up until that point, it's just so in depth, it's crazy but also not in a dull or boring way, it's like very very, like it reads like fiction, that's what I can't get over, like I had to keep reminding myself myself that this was a non-fiction book like these people he's talking about are real people and these events are real events and it's just phenomenal this book was fantastic and i'm going to stop talking about it now because you might be seeing it again in my next video which is my top books for 2016 so yes keep an eye out so there we are those are all the books that i read in december do let me know if you read any of them and what you thought of them what did you read in december as always i will leave links to facebook Tumblr, twitter everything i've mentioned today down below i hope you're all having a fantastic day and i will see you soon bye and this book basically basically goes into every detail of what happened and how that came to be but it also tells the story from the perspective of the murderers as well. Like this is why I love this book so much. <laughs>